Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today we are unboxing a new e-bike, at least new to me. This is the Velotrick Nomad, a fat tire adventure style electric bike. And by the way, someone watching this video right now is going to win this e-bike, the Velotrick Nomad. Stick around to the end of the video to see how that could be you. Without any further ado, let's check this thing out. Now this is going to be a heavy one, so I think I'm gonna do the old cut down the front of the box and slip her out method. You always wanna take a peek at where the tires are before you do this. There she is. You know, I've seen Velotrick around a lot recently, but I haven't actually checked out these bikes myself. So Velotrick reached out and they were nice enough to send me one so that I could try this bike out and see what all the, the fuss was about. And already I am loving this mango yellow color. All right, let's try and get this wheel on quickly so the bike will stand up by itself. All right, wheel in. Where's the kickstand here? Oh, I gotta put the kickstand on myself. And I assume that's gonna be in the accessory box here. This is why you should bring a bike stand when you do unboxings. All right, kickstand is here. Let's hurry up and get the stand on. There we go. All right, now we're standing up. And of course the grounds people are doing the uh, groundskeeping right when I'm trying to film a video here. All right, let's turn this box back into a box real quick so I can put all the trash in it. Reuse a few of the zip ties here. All right, and we've got a box again. Now to throw the uh, styrofoam in here so it doesn't all blow away. Okay, where were we? Back to our unboxing. Man, I'm loving this color. And it's funny because so many bike companies have told me that black is the best-selling bike color. And I just don't understand it. I don't know, maybe I'm alone, but I like bright bike colors. <laughs> Alright, how about these bars now? Did you guys see that save? All right, first we gotta turn that stem around. Turn around. Let's line her up. Always trickier to do without the bars on, but I think that's pretty close. Okay, now handlebar clamp time. Man, I am just still in love with this color. This is beautiful. I really wish more e-bike companies gave us pretty colors like this. I mean, I understand it's a nightmare for inventory when you've got a whole bunch of colors, but man, this is nice. It is so windy. Okay, bar time. So I notice there's no display up here. I'm guessing that's probably in the accessory box down there. Probably find out in a second. If I were a betting man, that's where it would be. Okay, bar's on. Let's see what we got down here. Headlight, bell, pedals. There we go, display. Man, you guys gonna make me put everything on, aren't you? Perfect, it's these tiny little three millimeter screws that I'm absolutely gonna drop and lose. Can't lose it if it's in your mouth. And we're in business. What else do we have in here? Nice little bell. Let's keep our trash in here. Thank goodness for the Phillips on a Leatherman. <laughs> I imagine they have one in their toolkit in there as well. What else do we have in here? Some pedals. Left goes on the left. Top of the pedal towards the front of the bike. Spin your partner round and round. Finish that off in a second. Ah, uh, you know what else I forgot to do? I forgot to tighten the front axle, which I always try to do right away, just so that cases like this don't happen where you forget and you don't do a last safety check and ride off with a loose front axle. So I gotta remember to do that. Probably a good time to do that is while I'm tightening those pedals. Let's get our 15 millimeter wrench out. And the ground screw is back to work. Left pedal tight. Right pedal tight. Now let's get those axle nuts. Kind of a weird wrench they give you here. Ah, got it. They give you another wrench specifically for the axle. Perfect. This one's more of a socket wrench, which works better here. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's so much better. Like I said, always tighten your axles right away because you're liable to forget if you don't. What else do we have here? It looks like the fender and probably a headlight goes with that. Let's 
think I saw a light in here. There it is, cute little guy. And then I think the last thing here are these fender bolts. Okay, everything is physically mounted now. We've got a few more electrical connections to make. Let's plug in our display wires here, nicely color-coded. Green goes with green, blue goes with blue here. And then we've got one for the headlight, I believe. Here we go. Red goes with red. And then lastly, we've got the battery here. Take that little bit of foam out, pop her in for the first time. Is there more foam in there? Yes, <laughs> more foam in there. Man, even the battery's yellow, look at that. I'm sorry I'm freaking out about the color here, people. It's just so beautiful. All right, battery in, nice click. Come around and start her up. There she blows. And there she goes. All right. And we're live. Man, look how windy it is out here. All right, so we're operational. Let's do some safety checks here, though, before we start flying around. All right, front brake. Whoop. I already feel the headset's a little loose there. Generally, those headsets come tightened. I did not check it while assembling, which I probably should have, but that's why you do these checks now. So, got to loosen the stem here just a little bit. Those headsets should really come tightened all the way from the factory, because that's not something most people should need to do. But that's why we check. All right, so now we can tighten down that headset just a little bit more. Take any play out of the bearings. Let's see how that looks. Oh, just a little bit left. There we go. That looks good. The only play left is in that suspension fork there. All right, so now we can tighten down the stem again, making sure that our handlebars are straight. Okay, back to our checks. Brakes good, headset good, rear brakes, axle nuts, I tightened those already. Headlight works. Do I have a tail light? Should probably put that rear reflector on. Man, they give you so many spare bolts here, that's nice. Unless there's something I'm forgetting. Doing so also found this nice axle cover here. That goes on. Now our reflector. And now I think we are ready to go. We got an 80% charge and we're gonna go have some fun. Oh, I found that there is a tail light in here. All right, now I've got a tail light and a reflector. Okay, now let's go have some fun. All right, so I've been having a lot of fun on the Nomad so far. I've been out for about uh, an hour and a half now. I think I've done about, uh, was it 20 miles here? Just basically messing around on roads, on some off-road, found a little uh, construction area that didn't have any no trespassing signs. I was out there as well. Basically just having some fun on the bike. So far, I've been really enjoying this setup. We've got, you know, a powerful motor, 750 watts. Of course, the peak power is gonna be over that, uh, over a thousand watts actually. Got the big fat tires here, four inches, so it's lots of fun on that sand and loose terrain. Of course, the suspension up front, and I found that the suspension is actually quite decent. You know, some of these bikes come with, um, you know, some really poor suspension. This one has really good rebound and also some decent damping as well. So I'm pretty happy with the suspension here for what's obviously a moderately priced bike. You know, 1500 bucks, that's a pretty good deal when it comes to these fat tire adventure style bikes. Now, I don't know if it's gonna stay at that sale price for that long, I think the MSRP is actually closer to 1600 bucks, but any way you slice it, you're getting a lot here. You guys know that I have sort of a fetish for hydraulic disc brakes, so I'm glad to see those are here. And they're actually some pretty good ones as well. So I'm really happy with the braking performance, 
all around the bike, I mean, the thing just looks great. We get the fenders included. If there was a rack included, I mean, I would have loved that, but it's hard to ask for too much at 1500 bucks. Of course, it's got the mounting points here. You can add one yourself. Another thing that I think is really important to cover is that the battery here is actually UL listed. This is becoming a bigger issue as we talk about the safety of lithium ion batteries in the e-bike industry. So it's great to see that Velotrek has gone ahead and done the UL listing for these batteries. It's not cheap, but it is important, especially moving forward as we start looking at tighter regulations around batteries and electric bikes. So uh, an awesome thing to see there. One thing that I still find kind of funny is that they went with the frame style that has this big area in the front here that looks like it would be housing some type of uh, mid-drive setup. Really, that usually holds the controller and it looks like sort of a fake mid-drive. Also, they sort of incorporate it into the design here of the uh, colorway. So it's kind of a, a neat thing there, but uh, in general, I always think it looks a little bit funny to see those sort of like fake mid-drive boxes there. All in all though, it's hard for me to ping the bike too much because it just, I mean, it's so nice to ride. You know, you got that eight-speed transmission, powerful motor. Between the two, the pedal assist feels great. It's a little bit jumpy when you get it into the higher levels, but if you're riding in higher pedal assist levels, you're probably already used to that kind of power. So if you're just starting out on the bike, certainly keep it in one of the lower levels, one, two, three. I mean, most of the off-roading I was doing back there was in level two, and that felt pretty comfortable because it was a nice lower speed, probably around like 12, 14 miles an hour, something like that, something that's not gonna get too much away from you. But of course, when you get out on the road, you can bump it back up to 20 and get going really fast. Now, would this have been nice as a 28 mile per hour class three bike? Of course, you guys know me, I love going faster when I have the option, but at the same time, going faster comes with more responsibility and perhaps that's just something that Velotrek didn't wanna mess with with this bike. So, you know, at 1500 bucks, class two, I can live with that. 20 miles per hour is certainly fast enough to have some fun off road. It's when you get back on road that you're in the bike lane on the side of a bigger road. That's where sometimes I'm wishing for that higher 28 mile per hour top speed. All in all though, I gotta say, really happy with what they've done here. So I definitely would recommend the uh, Bellatrix Nomad here. And it comes in multiple colors. Obviously you guys have seen how smitten I am with this mango color. I just think it's too awesome. So this is definitely the one that I would recommend, but it's nice to see that they've got a few color options. Also, just FYI, I'm going to have a review of this up on Electrek. It'll already be posted by the time this video is up. So I'll put a link down below where you can see a much more in-depth review of the bike. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be giving away this e-bike, the Velotrek Nomad. And I just want to say a big thank you to Velotrek for their generosity in supporting this giveaway. Now, how's this going to work? This is part of a new program I started just a few months ago. It's called eBikes for Good, where at the end of every one of my videos from now on, I'm gonna try and give away a free e-bike. The whole point behind this is that I have access to a lot of e-bikes that I don't really need more free e-bikes, but I know there are a lot of people out there who could actually make a big impact in their lives. So if you are someone like that, maybe you're down on your luck, you need a way to get around, a way to get some fitness, a way to get to work. If an e-bike could help improve your life in any way, I want you to let me know and let's see if we can get you a free e-bike. So how do you enter? You just go to ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good. The address is at the bottom of the screen there. Fill out the entry form there and there will be a randomly selected winner at the end of my next video to win this Velotrick Nomad. Now to announce the winner of the e-bike for my last video. And the randomly selected winner is... Ricardo V. So congratulations, Ricardo. Uh, I know things have been tough for you lately. You were hit particularly hard by the isolation aspect of the pandemic. You're looking for a way to get out, be mobile again, but you don't have a car. Well, I think we're gonna be able to help you out, Ricardo. We're gonna have a new e-bike headed your way. I've actually already been in contact with Ricardo offline, so I'm excited to get him that bike. And anybody else, if you wanna be like Ricardo and hopefully win a free bike, you can get this one, the Velotrick Nomad, sent to you for free if you're the randomly selected winner. So make sure you head on over to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood and let's see if we can help you out too. Last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video who will win a free copy of one of my books and the randomly selected commenter is... Bart9859. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below this video, say anything you like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't wanna wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time. Mm -hmm.